Okay, we're actually going to learn a new way of graphing. And this new way of graphing is called polar form or polar coordinates. Now, the way that you've learned to graph before, um, you've been taught to graph everything as an X, which is how far you go over horizontally, and then a Y, how far you go vertically. And we see these if we kind of drew graph paper. We'd have little squares, little rectangles. So your normal way of graphing are called rectangular coordinates. So those are your X and your Y's. Now, we also have a new way that we can represent each point. So we have this point X, Y, this one right here, okay? And we're gonna look at two, inf two pieces of information, the distance it is from the origin. So if we go from the origin up to that point, just draw a line, we call that R, how far it is. And then theta is the angle that it's taken to get there. Now, what we're gonna do is draw a triangle. So if we bring down the line from the point to the x-axis, oops, this was r, okay, so this is x and y. So we've got this triangle, I'll kind of draw it right here, where this is r, this is theta, this is x, and this is y. So this is the point that we either call x, y, or in polar coordinates, we call it r theta. And this is the origin. We can write some equations that will help us go between the two, okay? So our new pair is r and theta. Our old pair is x and y. And we're gonna wanna be able to talk about that same point either in rectangular or polar. So the first thing we can notice is this is a right triangle. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to say x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And this will help us solve for r if we have x and y. Because if we take the square root of both sides, we would say, we could say that r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay. Now, if we were looking for theta, we can write a couple equations using the, um, using trigonometry. So we could write, say that sine of theta equals the opposite over hypotenuse y over r. That cosine of theta equals x over r. And tangent of theta, opposite over adjacent, would be y over x. Which means if we have x and y and we wanna find theta, one way we can do it is by taking tangent inverse of x over y, that would be equal to theta. So these are the two equations that we'll use and we'll do another video where we have x and y and we're trying to find r and theta. And we'll actually use these two equations when we have r and theta and we wanna find x and y. So we'll talk a little bit more about that, but I wanted to show you that all of this comes from using a right triangle and very simple trig. Um, that's how we'll convert between the two. But first, let's just get some practice graphing in this new coordinate system. So our new kind of graph paper would actually look kind of like a bullseye, look like circles here. So let's get a different color. Let's do green. Um, so if we want to plot the point 5 and 120 degrees, we start at the origin and we go along the x-axis. So we count out 5. And think of these. These are each a circle with radius 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5. Then we're going to go counterclockwise 120 degrees. Now, these are each 30 degrees marked off. So this right here would be 120 degrees. So this is point Z. Now, Y says negative 5 and then 120. So we'd go out negative 5, which would just be in the opposite direction. So we'd count 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we'd go 120 degrees from there, which would be here. Okay, x, we want to go out 3, and then a negative pi over 6 would just be a negative 30 degrees. 
W, we're going out two, but then we're rotating, sorry, going out two, and then we're rotating zero degrees, so it would be there along the x-axis. And then V says we're going out zero and we're rotating pi over four, so that would actually be the origin. And this kind of brings up a good point, that rotating pi over four, if we're at zero, really doesn't do anything. So the origin can actually be written in polar coordinates as zero and then any angle. And kind of the weird thing about polar coordinates that doesn't happen in um, rectangular coordinates is you have more than one way to write the same point. So let's just look at z here, 5, 1, 20. Well, we could also write it as 5 and then negative, um, negative 30, 60, 90. Well, this would be negative 180, negative 210. So we could write it as 5 and negative 240 degrees. Right? Or we could write it out, we could go negative 5, and we could go negative 60 degrees. Or we could even say negative 5, and then if we went 300 degrees, we would end up there. So there's lots of different ways to write the same point. Um, and any, you know, if we went out 5 and then any angle that was coterminal to 120 would also land in that spot. So that's one thing to keep in mind with polar coordinates is um, this point would always either have an r of 5 or negative 5. And then if you either went negative 60 degrees in any angle coterminal to that, or 300 in any coterminal to that, um, or you could go out positive 5 and then do any angle coterminal to 120.